Welcome to Sonic Bites, the freewheeling conversation and interview series for the eclectic music lover. We're Leo Kelly G and Johnny Chung, and this week we have an extended episode taking a trip down memory lane and recounting our experiences with one of the most popular musical instruments of all time, the acoustic guitar. From arguing whether Taylor Swift is a good guitarist or not, to discussing the acoustic playing styles of Laura Marling, Dave Matthews, Hozier and Jack Johnson to name just a few, we discuss which acoustic guitarists we think are underrated and demonstrate some of our favourite riffs and their playing styles. If you are enjoying the podcast, please follow us on Spotify, Apple or Stitcher, or subscribe to us on YouTube channel Leo Kelly G Music and like this video, as it really goes a long way to supporting the podcast. We hope you enjoy the episode. Cool. I'm, a- I'm excited for this episode, man. Yeah, this is going to be a good one. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just a talk. I feel like I feel like we don't really talk about our acoustic guitars enough, in terms no. of like just me and you, you know, as two two buddies who who both play acoustics. We both play with each other on acoustic guitars. We even mm-hmm. played on one acoustic guitar together once. That was that's an interesting story that was, for another that time. Was dope. But, that um, was dope. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like. Like it, it just it's it's just so part of you, and it's so just an instrument that I just play now mm. that we never really take a step back and think about the acoustic guitar as as instruments as significant things in our lives. Like without acoustic guitars, like what? I mean, maybe we'd be playing electric guitars or something. But mm. <laughs> it's it's made it's it's a big makeup of your sound and. Um, of me learning to play guitar in the first place. Like I, I started on the classical guitar. Um, it was like a, I think it was like a 200 Hong Kong dollar, which is around like, it's like, like 20 quid. Yeah. A, less than that. Adjust, adjusted for inflation. Even less than that. <laughs> so, um, and yeah, and that's where my journey began. But yeah, and it, it's always just been something that's there. But to actually think about, like everything to do with it and how it's just yeah i don't know it's it's like a staple of everyone's home right so it's just something it's just something like people are always like oh they just picked up a guitar in their mm. dad's shed or something yeah and they and they it's in like all the all the all the all the stock like photos that you have are sort of like the like, like the idealistic home you have that kind of like guitar on a stand in the corner so like it's kind of yeah, like yeah. I, think, I think the idea of an acoustic guitar is something that a lot of people are really keen on um mm. just like just it, it seems to sort of have gone into the you know the psyche of at least like UK and, and US kind of um, pop culture. That sort of just to have one and to be able to sort of like strum chords in it is just sort of like a kind of cool thing to do. Yeah, but it's it's also just kind of yeah. I guess yeah, it, it is the sort of every person's instrument. But at the same time, it is a very also specific instrument. You know, um, there's I think I think there's like there's two sides to it, isn't there? I think mm. there's there's the every man side of it that um you know it's 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 so versatile in that um you can learn you know four chords and a guitar in a day and if Mm. you have a capo as well um you know and a bit of perseverance you can essentially play a heck of a lot of songs very very quickly at least at least you know pop songs and sort of songs that Mm. where you're just strumming chords you know it's 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 a lot easier to carry around than a piano um a heck Mm. of a lot easier to carry around than a piano um and unlike an electric where you have to have all of the other gear with you like if you buy an electric guitar you have to buy an amp you, you know if you want to get into it you have to buy pedals and things like that whereas with an acoustic guitar you only have to buy an acoustic guitar and like hypothetically at least that like with enough practice there's nothing that you can't play on an acoustic guitar if you see someone else playing it if that makes yeah, sense fair. that was yeah. kind of the selling point to me when i started playing mm. was that um obviously to begin with i um I, I started playing piano to begin with so i was i was 11 when i started playing piano i was very i was quite late to starting music really um and then i picked up a guitar when i was 14 my guitar was um it was 60 pounds so 600 hong kong dollars wow um That's... but it was from it was from argos <laughs> and like starting was, starting out the gates flying <laughs> starting out the gates flying it, but it, it was a classical it was a classical guitar weirdly enough and it came with like a pitch pipe that you blew to, to tune the strings and like the strings were like this far off the fretboard um, so yeah. you couldn't play like anything <laughs> past fret number five um, mm. kind of thing. But um, I think like, so So the way I learned was that I, I transferred everything that I had on piano to guitar. So it was sort of like, oh, well, that's a C chord. How do you play a C chord here? You know, sort of like, so you... and so that was a lot of working out like that and sort of learning what the chords were and moving it out. So like sure. I sort of 
transferred the theory knowledge over when I actually started playing um, like other people's songs past part like the, I, for me at least there was a chord playing phase of my guitar if that makes sense sure. where like you know I'd, um, I went on ultimateguitar.com classic ultimateguitar.com oh, hours, to find all the hours there yeah. hours spent on ultimate before the before you could before you could pay the money for like a premium yeah, version <laughs> exactly just like, sit that's through. the OG yeah. that's the OG exactly <laughs> Um, but so, so I literally just used to do that to begin with. Um, and it was just like Oasis, like Jason Mraz, Jack Johnson, just literally just learning chords, you know, so, so like, you know, and, and, mm. and figuring out very quickly, you know, like if you have, um, you know, like a G chord here, like the wonderful thing about, I think this is the other really good thing about acoustic guitar and just guitar in general is that like, it's so transferable. So if you have a song that's in G major and you want to play it in G sharp major, you literally just... And then you're in G sharp, so like the, the, it's it's very movable. So like once you once you learn the shapes and the chords, sort of you can you can learn a lot very quickly. You know, like the the, the learning curve of, of of guitar playing is like that to begin with, and then it tapers off afterwards. I think. Um, but yeah. Like when I. Um, but when I yeah, did start I mean, learning other sorry, people's songs, uh, well, when I started learning other people like, like actual acoustic guitar songs, Wonderwall being the first one, uh, which is a horrible meme in itself, but. But because because it's it's just an acoustic guitar, um, there's a very sort of one to one like trans transfer of skill, if that makes any sense. If you see someone playing it, you can work out what they're doing and you can replicate it. Whereas if for me at least for electric guitar, that was what sort of turned me off it for a while. That um, because I didn't have like the right pedal or I didn't have the right guitar because obviously I have a strap. If you don't have a like a strap versus a Gibson, you can't get the exact sound in the same way that was quite discouraging for me. Whereas with acoustic guitar, if I could hear it and I could copy it enough, then I could learn to play it. And it was literally because it was the same sound. It's the sound of an acoustic guitar most of the time. And so it's a much more versatile instrument in that sense, I think. And because you can you, you can literally see something and then you can, you can make it sound like it, obviously with a lot of practice, but there's no extra, um, you know, like levels or anything you have to unlock to be able to do it. It's just, it's literally just, you can just sit down and, and you can practice. So I think the lack of being able to, to hide on the instrument and sort of just, you know, like if you plug in an acoustic guitar to play, like it's going to sound the way you play it. And so it all, it's all from your hands. There's no tone like fiddling around as there is an electric. There's no amp. There's nothing else that can go wrong. It's literally just your hands and the strings. And so I think that's kind of the appeal, at least for me and a lot of people perhaps. Yeah. And I think it's quite funny to think that the acoustic guitar came from like classical guitar, you know, like there's and the like just just the way it descended like I, I just won't think of the original classical guitar that turned into the steel string guitar like mm. that guitar wasn't something that was economized to the scale that it is today you know like no one was no one was going there to learn like classical pieces on the classical guitar yeah as, um, like on the scale of what the acoustic guitar, what the steel string acoustic guitar is treated as, mm. um, so the fact that it evolved the into fire. that, yeah, and then and then that those acoustic instruments evolved into the electric versions, you know, mm. so so the acoustic guitar definitely has all the sort of the the grandparent rights over the electric guitar, just because it's been around longer, you know, um, mm. and. And the electric version of it was supposed, I guess, supposed to be like a, like sort of like a technological advancement of that. You want people wanted to drive and create electrical versions of it. Um, mm. Like the electric guitar wouldn't be designed that way without the acoustic guitar. And yes, <laughs> exactly. I yeah, think it originally and, came out of um, it was it was because of uh, like big band jazz. And stuff like that that you'd have acoustic guitar players in a bit in a jazz band but mm. um basically because they were so quiet they tried to amplify the sound so that you could actually hear the guitar part yeah as opposed mm. to just seeing a guy going like you know and not really hearing it over the sound of like a trumpet for example um yeah. you, you have stick a microphone and an entire orchestra but, yeah mm. Mm, to compete with yeah, so mean, if you, you, have, you have things like you have things like rodrigo's guitar uh concerto but whenever the guitar comes in, it's always sort of like the orchestra has to quiet down in order for the guitar yeah. to come up. And uh, and maybe there are really intense bits where it's like, <laughs> but then yeah, <laughs> uh, but then yeah, most of the main melodies on a guitar are when it's really quiet. So uh, yeah, but then that exactly. then it evolves into electric guitar, and that's another tangent we don't want to go down right now. 
But, yeah. Uh, but then you have you also, you also have the, like, the electroacoustic, I guess, which mm. um, which has definitely become I, more popular so, recently. Um, yeah. Well, recently, as in you know, whenever we could plug a guitar in and need it to yeah. amplify it to the crowd, and not use a mic to amplify it, you know. And it's not. It's not like it's not that. As in, like it's 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 not been around all that long, I think, because like I've I've mm. watched videos of if you watch like Simon and Garfunkel or Peter Paul and Mary in the nineteen sixties, they're not playing electroacoustics. So like in the nineteen sure. in the in the sixties, like electroacoustics weren't as much of a thing as they are as they are now. Yeah. You know, like now if you don't have an electroacoustic, it's kind of like well you can't really yeah <laughs> play anywhere except busking maybe. Um, but even yeah. then, you'd expect to use an amp kind of thing. Yeah, well, you, well, you didn't really have stadium concerts until the late mid 60s when the beatles came out you know so yeah that's uh, very true actually yeah so amplification is a yeah it's not a i mean that's another tangent that's all the time you know? we got to really we got to reel it in man you got it yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> gotta make sure. start quoting start it's, quoting david byrne all over again it, yeah it's free wheeling but it's, it's not that free we still yeah it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's wheeling wheeling within the topic yeah <laughs> I think another thing yeah. about the acoustic guitar that makes it so so versatile, I think, or, or at least allows so many people to play it, is that it, it it's such a great accompanying instrument. Um, sure. And the, 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 I think the potential, especially for acoustic guitar, for accompaniment is is so high, um, and you can do so many different things with it. I think that's what allows it to proliferate so much as well. In that you can have yeah. obviously, you know, you've literally just got. I mean, to take a really simple, you know, you can literally just strum and sing, you know. Should we play Wonderwall? Are we allowed to play Wonderwall? Um, Do you reckon if, our fans are haters to play Wonderwall? It's for educational purposes. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say they were going to say exactly the same thing. <laughs> it's for education, so it's fine. But like, because you can literally go like, you know, and sing, maybe. like it's it's so it's so easy to accompany that. But like that's so you can strum chords, but you can also have the whole sort of like you know. You can have sort of like the you know moving bass lines, and you can sort of have stuff that gets quite intricate in that sense as well. Isn't it? You have that sort of thing. You have like the whole. Um, I put my pick down instead of speaking with a mouthful of plectrum. Um, but you know, but you also have like the whole like Travis picking kind of thing where you can pick out a chord and a melody at the same time. So something like um, like freight train like. Uh, kind of thing as well where like you know big, like you're, you're only really limited by the number of fingers you have the amount of different melodies you can play in one hand and so i think the the accompaniment thing is really really big as well because it means you can not not only just accompany a voice but you can accompany you know like another bat another instrument playing like it's 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 so versatile in that sense and, and obviously you've got the whole like there's that but there's also the whole um sort of rhythmic element of things as well you have the sort of like you know So there's the potential to have like the drumming side of it as well. So there's there's extra sort of you can almost be a one man band with an acoustic guitar, and I'd I, I'd argue that's something that's not as similar with many other instruments. Like you can't like like with piano you can, but you can't really add a rhythm section, and you can't really do it with an electric guitar either. Sort of you know of the of the instruments that are played by most people. Um, whereas with the acoustic you can have you can have rhythm, you can have bass, you can have melody, you can and then you can sing over the top if you want to. So there's this or you can solo. So there's so many different, you know, aspects to the acoustic guitar, I think, that make it so um, sort of widely, wide, widely accessible, but also very widely playable. Yeah, no, yeah, I was, I was gonna, I was gonna sort of try and think of as many contexts with the acoustic guitar as possible, but you were just reeling them off, so I just let you go. Sorry, <laughs> um, <laughs> didn't, didn't give me a chance, man. <laughs> um, but I was gonna, I was gonna say, yeah, you have accompaniments, you have like guitar virtuosos in their selves, and mm. and um, yeah, and, and all the different picking styles, all the different accompanying styles, um, and all the different tunings as well. Um, mm. You said you've been playing in open tunings quite a lot recently, right? Yeah, all sorts of different tunings, but I mean, but I think the tunings sort of serve as themselves. Um, but I'm just thinking of where the guitar sits in in just a mixture of other instruments. You know, mm. um, you have like obviously in country, it's pretty much 
an essential instrument it's, for it's the right Islamic there. country. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, you could probably do a con- like because countries obviously there's like a lot of other vibe <laughs> elements, mm. like harmonic elements to it, like like harmonies and other. You could put mandolins and banjos in there, and and have a rhythm and it'll, like you don't necessarily need an acoustic guitar. But I think in most modern um, modern country, that's sort of a it is a staple. Um, yeah, definitely. And then and then in yeah i guess in r&b you have it as like an accompaniment um is is very easy way to again yeah it, it's like it's it's a different style cuz in in r&b you're not going to have all these different types of picking styles or travis picking or um or like no. kind of dandy things <laughs> or then folk, again folk folky things but i guess again, folk's like, another genre country mm. rap is is now a thing so if it was ever, if yeah, it's ever but... going to happen, 2020 is the year for like, you know, a, a crazy flat picking solo or like some actual nice yeah. like finger picking in, in rap music. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how long that lasts. But... Make it happen, Jay-Z. Come no. on, make it happen, man. Come on, Kanye. It's, um, it's, it's, it's more of a meme, really. But Give the, give um... the people, a person, <laughs> what they want. <laughs> um, but yeah, but then you have it in, yeah, just all sorts of different music, really. Um, I mm. mean, just general pop music. What else is there? Um, like acoustic versions of rock songs, I think is another context where you can go to. Like all those yes. like ball- ballads of like like hard rock bands doing like a slow song. They always have like a signature slow song and it'll either be on like a very solemn piano yeah. or there'll be an acoustic version of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Word. Yeah. Yeah. Extreme, you know? They're a, Extreme. They're a, something else. But I they, find that bad. I mean so funny because there's they are like a really hard rock band but like t- yeah. to me at least um mm. i discovered them through more than words and i think a lot of people mm. have the same and it's their most streamed song and so it's 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 it's, a, yeah. it's quite ironic that such a hard rock band gets famous from like a really quiet acoustic song yeah but i think they're one of the bands that e- even though they're sort of um like they're sort of cursed by their most popular song. They still appreciate that song. I feel <laughs> it's oh, definitely, it's, yeah, yeah. It's just a bit of a meme. Where some people, I feel like they they just hate their most popular song. They just don't want to play it. Um, yeah, I can't think of those bands off the top of my head, but they're yeah, they're just like like I won't play that song because it's it's the song that made us sold out and people only know us for that song and only request it at their shows. Well, but, do you remember when we went to watch? Um, sorry, it's a bit of a tangent. But like, do you remember when we went to watch John Mayer and like? Um, we were this as in the last time we went to go and watch him and like mm. uh, we were so like if the stage is if the stage is here and he's looking that way we were up here weren't we like yeah. looking down and like the people in yeah. the front like the whole night were like play neon play neon <laughs> but, you know, and, he, and like halfway through he was like I'm not gonna play neon because I don't want to so like you know you can become a victim and then he ended up doing it in the end he did it as you did it anyway because yeah. he realized that you know yeah. you've got to give the people what they want but it was quite funny that it was just sort of like mm. don't, like stop asking me to play neon um yeah but yeah I think um yeah it, it, it does find its way into a lot of contexts um and I think I think as a cover as as a cover instrument I guess if you can call it that it's really handy because again it's something that you can you know if if like if you know the chords of the song and you can sing the melody to a song um you know or if you can play the melody to a song that's kind of all you need yeah enough to do a cover like it's as long as you're harmonically in the right place um it's Mm. like it's recognizable as a cover and so i think because it's 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 very easy at least in terms of playing um that you can transpose it really easily as well like if if you knew Mm. say well, I don't know, like 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 a one like a, like the one six five four the whole like, in like G and C, like you can play most songs quite easily with yeah. a capo. I mean, yeah, but it it I th- I find it interesting also. Does does it make it like what sort of sound is it? You know, um, I, I guess it is versatile in the fact that it can, but at the same time. It's like it's like a violin, you know. Violin, you think of it as a classical instrument. You think of it as maybe as like a folk fiddle, as a fiddle, um, yeah, Irish sort of thing. But with acoustic, does it does it sort of? Do you feel like it homogenizes things in in a good way? I I, I think maybe Ooh. it does, but does it make it just be like? Is it just like a thing that just makes it sound Western? That's just I don't, I don't know. I think um, I think there's definitely that. I I think that yeah I think yes and no. 
um, mm. because I think there's 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 a way of playing guitar, especially acoustic guitar, that is very Western. Um, mm. You know, and I think when you hear acoustic guitar in particular contexts, it can sound that way. Um, mm. Christ, Christian rock is a really really good example where like <laughs> mo- like you know most songs are in the key of in the key of G, key of God, key mm. of G, um, you know, or like key of God capo three or whatever it is, and like oh, you yeah. know. It's kind of like you know every time like every oh, time the, I hear like the tr- Trinity Trinity G, yeah Holy yeah Trinity G, like every time it's it's like we've we've joked about this haven't we like every time you hear like a like a like a C add nine it's just sort of like oh no not again I hated kind that chord thing. for years yeah was, I know because yeah. it's like, I've come it's, around I've I've come around to it though I think I think it is a nice sounding chord it's fine I always think as long as you do like the whole like you do something with it so as long as you're not just playing like I see you've got to have like you like. I'll see you something uh, nice over it. Uh, well, you see, that's sort changed thing, for you know. me. I, I think I'm coming around to the the traditional C add nine, man. Coming around to the C add nine. I think I think there's a certain amount of sort of musical memory and association that has to come with that chord. That I, I'm sort of now I'm getting over myself a bit and being a bit less of a snob. I feel yeah. like um, I'm a I'm, yeah I'm appreciating. You know, I will play it without. I will play a C add nine. <laughs> Without cringing, yeah, <laughs> and I'll resolve to G also without cringing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think um, it, I think it depends how an acoustic guitar is played. Um, I think again, if, if if you are just strumming chords, like generally you'll be strumming open chords, so like songs, you know, chords like C N nine or a G, you know. And I think that has the tendency mm. to make music sound quite Western. Mm. Um, whereas mm. I think if you can play it in a way that's a bit more you know, a bit different, a bit more versatile, even if you're just using chords mm. that are a little bit different. You know, like if I hear something like, um, I'm just trying to think, something like, you know, you have like a, a, a richer chord, like something like that. Like mm. it's not, that's like that to me is not that, mm. if that makes sense. Like even if the chords yeah. are just inverted in a certain way, if you have nice inversions, mm. you know, like something like an E chord up here with an add nine, like, you know, it just, it gives it a different, sound i suppose yeah or even just like rhythmically you can change it so much you can have like and that's already so kind of like flamenco yeah <laughs> like that's sort of exactly uh, and you have the whole like sort of spanish like like you know the whole like yeah like yeah. the the, uh, the rasaguedo technique where you mm. and all the slapping and everything so like you can you can make it sound a lot like more versatile, not, not more, not, not more versatile than it is, but you can make it, um, it, it, it speaks in a lot of different ways. I think it's very, it's, I think it's really easy to, it's easy to homogenize acoustic guitar. Cause I think the, the majority mm. of people who do play acoustic guitar play it in a certain, um, you know, setting, you know, not, not necessarily around the campfire. It's a bit cliche, but you know, you'll play it mm. in order to just accompany yourself, seeing in your bedroom, or maybe with a few friends or an open mic night kind of thing. Whereas, I think uh, it has. Uh, it's. I don't want to say it's become like something that can be taken more seriously, but I think there are a few players, at least today, and sort of over time, have established it as an instrument that you can play. Um, you know, outside of the classical world, sort of with a degree mm. of virtuosity as well. Um, you yeah. know, someone like Django Reinhardt. Um, you know, playing. Mm. You know, acoustic gypsy jazz and it being incredibly virtuosic or you know modern day people like um i mean tommy emmanuel is a big one now obviously um mm. being the big one but even people like andy mckee um or john gom who are mm. you know who or newton faulkner again another one sort of these finger star guitar players who have the whole like oh you know it it, it yeah. To me, at they least, are. it establishes guitar as, as as an instrument that you can take really, really seriously, like, and that and that kind mm. of that was what moved me on at least when I was from my playing. So, like for about six months, I was playing chords, happy to playing chords, and then I discovered people like Andy McKee, and it kind of like it just blew my mind a little bit. It's like, oh, so you could like there's there's this whole other world of stuff that you can do on the acoustic guitar, and it really, you know, it can be yeah. a lot broader than just just playing chords and accompanying yourself. Yeah, I do think of them as sort of like a different genre of guitarist as well, you know, like because of the versatility of the instrument. Mm. I, I don't think of them in the same league as Ed Sheeran or John Mayer, you know, like just mm. like just they're just completely different sports, but using the same thing, you know. Yeah, it's like a it's like a football and an American football, you know, they're still yeah. made of 
some sort of like uh, whatever material footballs are made of. I, I don't know. I'm walking myself into a corner. Not, 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 <laughs> but, <laughs> not yeah. never anymore. But yeah, but yeah, it's like a football and an American football. You know, mm. it's even it's less than that, isn't it? It's 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 even it's more like it's like it's like mm. both teams playing with a football, but like with completely different rules. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, it's like yeah. if I played football the normal way and you play football, you had to run backwards and you could only hit the ball with the back of your hands. Um, yeah. And that was the way that, you you know, like it's... Yeah, like, they, they, both, like, they both they both bounce, you know, like thing. <laughs> they both make the same sounds when yeah. they bounce. But yeah, they, they're used for completely different things. Yeah, but like, to, to, like it's it, it, yeah, like you can't really compare like mm. an Ed Sheeran to Tommy Emmanuel, for example. Like it's just, it's, yeah. it's so far a part in you know it influences in playing style and everything it's almost like it's it, it almost seems like a different instrument doesn't it which is mm. which i guess again again is that you know it speaks to the whole i i sorry i keep hammering this point home the whole versatility thing but like mm. but the fact that you can play um you know you, you can literally just you know accompany yourself go like like and that's acoustic guitar but then like if you're you know tommy emmanuel and, you, and then you're doing some crazy like terrible instrument intro but like you know that that is that is the same you know it's the same instrument but you can make it sound so different um mm. yeah i guess is how it's how it's proliferated as far as it, can, it has done so far you know yeah i mean I, I feel like we've convinced people enough that guitar is, is a pretty cool instrument <laughs> it is very, it is <laughs> a very cool play. instrument yeah I, I think what's i think what i find interesting in terms of guitar players nowadays as well as like how um like how some people are just like sneakily good at yeah at playing acoustic guitar that you don't realize um mm. and like if you, you just kind of pick it up and you just sort of like oh oh yeah you can like but, play play yeah i mean yeah there's, there's there's that shock factor but there's also people where maybe they're in a musical context where they're not like that's not the forefront of like the like showing how good they are at guitar isn't isn't the deal here you know yeah like um like it's um it's it's obviously something they play and it's obviously something you can hear in a mix but those people aren't there to hear that person play acoustic guitar and judge their tone and do mm. all the mu- musician things you know yes um and and yeah and just finding all those ways where th- those little nuances um occur in the music that we listen to or the music that we experience i think that's what keeps music interesting to me like not just for acoustic guitar i think this is a concept you can bring to any instrument or vocalist or any part of music but it's like yeah finding those little like oh man that guy that's that's that was actually really good <laughs> um, yeah but you didn't notice it the first time around or or it's not what other people are looking for in the, in the music at the same time yeah and it's not even um, what the artist as you said like it's not even what the artist is like mm. billing themselves as um yeah i think a lot of a lot of singer songwriters have that where um mm. i i think i think the singer songwriter genre i mean it's 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 interesting because obviously it's changed so much nowadays like traditionally when you're talking sort of like the american and the english folk scenes in the 1960s it was you know, a person with, you know, singing the songs you've written with an acoustic guitar traditionally, um, you yeah. know, like Bob Dylan obviously being sort of the, the main, not, not the main one, but sort of the the original, you know, singer songwriter. The, the granddaddy. The granddaddy. The granddaddy. But then, you know, James sing. Taylor, Joni Mitchell, Peter, Paul and Mary, Paul Simon, all these guys mm. who came up as singer songwriters. Um, but like, and I don't think as, as as a result, because because what's most important, at least because, you know, because you are a singer songwriter, you're not a songwriter singer, the singing mm. and what you're actually saying is is more important. And it's, it's, mm. it's almost if you're a singer songwriter, it's kind of implicit or at least it was that you played guitar, mm. but you never bill yourself as you know, I'm not singer songwriter and guitarist. I'm a singer songwriter. Um, yeah. And so I think as a result, the guitar, you know, it serves to accompany the voice and the message that the people are putting across and so it becomes it moves to the background and so it's so even as a singer songwriter when you have someone who's actually good at guitar um to me it's quite a pleasant surprise because because the, they're doing more than just strumming chords and so like the guitar becomes um you know not not as much of a selling point but it's kind of like the you know the the, the guitar part has been crafted as well as opposed to just 
having the chords and, and the melody and the, the lyrics being sort of the main thing that the person's focusing on. Yeah, and I think, I feel like maybe it's just a passage of time where a lot of guitar, a lot of guitar playing artists might have, like the, the not the top, the, not the cream of the crop have mm. been maybe forgotten. But I feel like everything before, say like punk and grunge came around, Mm. where it, um, it was almost like those movements were... I mean, these, this is a bit of electric guitar, but those, this is a guitar in general. But th- almost those movements were sort of like a rejection of like a very techni- like the very technical playing of the 80s. You know, the 80s, you yeah. have thrash metal, you have... Uh, I mean, I need to pull it back to acoustic guitar at some point. But you have thrash metal and you have... Thrash um, acoustic. And hard, even just hard rock, like all the hard rock guitarists were insanely good. Um, everything from, okay, this is not hard rock, but like Led Zeppelin up to Guns N' Roses to Aerosmith to Bon Jovi, like all these bands had like ridiculous guitarists mm. and, and, um, and they could all, and, and even, even all the, the, the guitar, the folk, the singer songwriters, we say, they were all like insanely good guitarists, like yes. Paul Simon absolutely i mean you're a paul simon disciple you know how how amazing of a guitarist he was just in terms of a player of the guitar like yeah. we're gonna ignore we're gonna ignore the songs here we're gonna ignore the production yeah like um, i mean with just paul like simon, guitar players like, yeah. I like, I like but but i say he's like, underrated he, he's, <laughs> yeah he's someone that i'd say is he's yeah. an underratedly good acoustic guitar player in that like yeah i think main underrated the... guitar players is is sort of yeah i feel like we should delve into that you know a, I know absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Um, to, to your point yeah. about um, you know sort of the 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 um, I guess you could say the nineteen eighties was the high point of sort yeah. of you know of, of guitar technicality. If you're thinking people like Eddie Van Halen and Slash, sort of like the yeah. w- where it was where the you know the 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 interest of the, the of the population married up with the movement of electric guitar virtuosity. Mm. And yeah. you know, and for that time, they sort of their movement. Obviously, you have way, the yeah. '90s and the punk movement where rebellion mm. against that became popular. And obviously, guitarists mm. still kept getting better. You know, you have people like Guthrie Govan now, for example, who is mm. argu- technically at least probably one of the best guitar players yeah. ever to walk the earth. I'm sure um, he slays at acoustic guitar as well. We just have he around. does. Oh God, <laughs> I have. Um, there's there's a video. If you type in like Guthrie Govan acoustic, you just watch him like absolutely yeah. shredding acoustic guitar as well. Yeah. But, um, Although he is he is not underrated, he's definitely just rated. <laughs> no, he's just rated, Ac- accurately rated. Is absolutely amazing. Mm. Um, but I think like it's it's interesting, isn't it? Because that that was the era mm. of of guitar heroes. You know, where you have these people mm. who you can you can grow up idolizing as guitar mm. players. You know, so, so people who were interested in guitar, they had something to focus on, as well as the people who aspired to be singers, for example. Whereas I think. Mm. It's less so now, obviously, with the proliferation mm. and sort of the the um, the bleeding of of hip hop, um, you know, and trap music and all the other sort of genres that have come afterwards into popular music, and that's kind of what's popular now. The acoustic guitar is, mm. to a large extent, at least in terms of like UK and US, like the pop charts, it's it's fallen by the wayside a little bit. Like mm. the last uh, sort of singer songwriter was Ed Sheeran really and even he once he after he finished his first album obviously the the acoustic guitar played a much lesser role a much more diminished role in Mm. the last two albums that he brought out Um, although I reckon Ed Sheeran's still a really good guitarist you know just oh yeah no he's he does um, all the looping and and all the his playing is very solid it's tight you know you can't be a bad guitarist and use loop pedals and you know like you gotta have some sort of fundamental rhythm and and oh no definitely to, i to think he's play. he's I, I would argue actually he's um he's he, he's he's quite an underratedly good guitar player as well yeah in, in that i, I think if, he, if you try and he's cop- definitely better than most people i feel he, he's he's better than yeah. people give him credit for i think yeah. and if you actually try and if you try and play ed sheeran stuff like even like mm. the, the last sort of ed sheeran song that i properly learned was probably the 18 when it came out in 2010 um yeah. you know like like learned learned um mm. it's hard to play like to get that kind mm. of like the you know like the, like the thumb picking and the sort of muting that's like, like it's got a really nice kind of like mm. to get that kind of like 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 the 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 nuance of like striking the string and muting it at the same time and having that sort of really nice like sort of muted palm like the palm muted kind of sound like as well as having the like the the thing 
you know, is is like that. That took me months to get it like to, to the point where I was like happy playing it, kind of thing. Um, yeah. So and I think I, I think I'd count along... him. he's an underrated guitarist. He's an underrated. He's definitely underrated. Like he he deserves more credit as a guitar player than than he gets. I think. Yeah, and I think along that same vein, I would argue like maybe controversial, but I think Taylor Swift is actually like a really good guitarist. Um, yes. And... Hear me yes. out. Hear me out. Hear no, me no, out. Go on. Go on. I, I understand I think, hesitation. I think, I think I'm on your side. Go on. But if you, like, okay, so she doesn't do anything flashy, you know, like she's not gonna be learning Tommy Emmanuel songs anytime soon. That's not her stick. That's not her stick. <sighs> but if but, she did, I mean, if she did, sure. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure, that'd be cool. But, uh, and, but at the same time, if you look at some of the performance that she's done, um, I think she did a few for like the Grammys museum things mm. um there was also the tiny desk that she did recently and there's also yes. I think like a like a dv uh, sorry uh, like a live stream not live stream like a streaming concert that came out and you hear and you hear her and she's like you forget that she started out as like a like she's been playing guitar since she's been writing songs yeah so she's, she's had country, years she's a country, of ex- country singer years of experience and just the way like she'll like she has a really good sense of rhythm Mm. Um, like her, her. She's not just one of those strummers. Like you think of her just just a strummer, mm. but um, but she has a lot of like her internal sense of rhythm to be able to deliver these incredible pop songs that touch like m- billions of people. Yeah, and the fact you can step on a stage and just go. Yeah. that type of like i think it's underrated like obviously like like i play it because i play acoustic guitar i'm not going to be embarrassed to say like like i can play that but mm. it, it it is consistent like it, she's almost like a for that particular thing that she needs to do in order to express herself and express the songs that she wants to deliver like sh- she's just really good like she she never screws up yeah so you and, mean. And, and and there are things where she like she does occasionally like do some other yeah, and even now I'm like kind of crapping myself because like yeah. <laughs> I don't screw it up. But like she's got all that pressure of performing to absolute millions of people every single night, and and all the public pressure and the fact that she can just get on stage and just completely nail an acoustic performance. I think there's something to be said there that she's she's a good guitarist. You know, she knows yeah. what she needs to do with the guitar. She doesn't mess about and try and proclaim she's like the best guitarist ever Mm. but i think she's better than the like considering the amount of people that play acoustic guitar in the world i think she's better than the average guitarist yeah (laughs) i i I, I say she's i'd argue no no, i i see what you mean i I think Mm. it's i think you 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 said a strummer i think is a really good like category to put Mm. a lot of like not 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 to put everybody Mm. in but like it's a good like marker for sort of like Mm. at least to me um you know as someone who plays acoustic guitar as my main instrument Mm. Um, you know, and as a singer songwriter, so like I very rarely try. You know, I, I I try to limit strumming in my songwriting as much as possible. Mm. But I think like like as a strummer, like there's there, there's like a there's if, if there's a spectrum of strummer to like beginner to you know expert strummer, I, I'd say she's definitely like at the top end of strumming. Mm. In that, mm. like you know, she can strum and, and sing, and like and they're not. It's not just like yeah. you know one beat to the bar, like you know, like mm. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm. You know, and I, I think that is to be said, but like. It's, I think it's difficult, isn't it? Because I think to be an underrated guitarist, you have to be better than people think you are or expect you to be. Mm. Um, and I think uh, it's 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 it's. I think I mean I, I don't want to go too far into this whole thing. This is a whole other kettle of fish. But I think there's there's definitely a a gender aspect to guitar playing as well. That I think mm. um, like in terms of technical virtuosity, like on guitar playing, it is expected that um you know at least in my experience they're like uh, as a male person playing guitar whether it's just because of like you know that your hands are generally bigger your fingers are stronger or whatever that you're expected to be at a certain level and i think um and, and this is broadly speaking but i think women less so and so i think when you have someone who is um you know as good as taylor swift is it's kind of like it comes as a surprise to a lot of people and it's just like, oh she's actually quite good at guitar if that mm. does that make sense yeah, uh, I think yeah, she she, I, she defies I, I, the expectation that people have 
of her as a female singer songwriter mm. um but at the same time like objectively like i, I wouldn't put, like i would like so she's she's underrated in the like people but but i think because people don't rate her very highly to begin with as a guitar player yeah i, I think i that think that sense. is so she that defies is it, the expectation know, yeah. of it but like I would argue that there are better female guitar players out there. Like Joan, like, like if you were to compare like Taylor Swift to Joni Mitchell, for example, who is an amazing mm. guitar player, you know, full stop. Yeah, um, there's, you know, there, I, yeah there, there are different and, things though. That at the same time, I'm not arguing that either. Um, so at, at the same time, I'm not saying Taylor Swift's a better guitarist than Joni Mitchell or by anyone that considers themselves a guitarist, you know? like like a like a, like a good acoustic guitar player so yeah. there, there's there, i feel like there isn't a comparison needed to be made in terms of like ranking people between people you know um like ju- i'm i'm, I'm ju- like if we're just saying taylor swift is a good guitarist i feel like you can you can just leave it there you don't need to bring um like comparing to Joni mitchell like <laughs> you know just just taking that as an example inclusive of itself you know yeah but, yes but, but I, 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 see what you mean. I understand i understand the concept argument in terms of yeah like ob- objectively speaking if you're if you're ranking everyone in a scale of one to a hundred then you know then then maybe she isn't but at the same time i feel like there are things to appreciate about her and, and that's why she's underrated I yeah think. i think like, she's a good I, I, I would i would even i would even argue that she has better uh guitar playing like timing wise than the both of us yeah yeah so that yeah so there's things you know that doesn't make her a better guitarist than us hmm. but yeah i'm not i'm absolutely not arguing that but um but yeah uh yeah i don't know i i, I just don't want people to sort of dismiss people as like like bad guitarists or like av- like below average you know just because no, they no, do a certain I see, thing. i see what you mean i i, I yeah I, I, I for what she's expected to do mm. i think she's a good guitar player but i think mm considering the amount of like the standard of guitar playing that exists um like i think there are there are better guitar players out there who who do the same thing in terms of their singer songwriters um and just happen Mm. to be like like dolly parton for example is a ridiculously good flat picking guitar player um i know but we're just naming like one like sorry uh, i'm thinking we're just gonna have to agree to disagree but we're just naming like one or two guitarist okay not saying that she's the third best guitarist but i feel no, like no, 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 no. You, you can always name someone that's better you know no 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 uh, no i get that but i'm but, but, but what, what i mean is that like in terms of what she's in terms of what she's what she's doing like there are people who do the same thing um you know who, who build themselves as singer songwriters who are like sneakily better and so like because they mm-hmm. exist and i'm aware of the fact that they exist like I, I, like I find it hard to then like say that Taylor Swift is then in the same category if that makes sense. Mm, I yeah. watched a video a while ago about this this person talking about like um, I don't want to spend this whole episode like ragging on Taylor Swift because I think she's a fantastic she is she is fantastic she's an amazing songwriter and everything um, but just in terms of guitar playing but the guy was saying like, oh she and she's she's capo literate as well in that like. Mm you know which is such like a weird phrase to use because it's kind of like just understanding how to use a capo is like not capo literary it's just you know that's you know like playing a song in g versus playing it in b flat like g capo three is like like you know to, to me it's like the like if you apologies my capo fell on the floor um but like in my mind it's like well why can't you just play the song in b flat and then like move the you know learn to play different chord shapes and things like that yeah, I mean, as opposed at, to just at the moving same it around time, and playing in the same key, kind of thing. Like capo literacy is like is a way mm. of getting around not learning more chords and not learning to be a better guitar player. It's almost saying that like, okay, well, I'm happy with the five chords that I'm playing, um, mm. and I'm just going to move them around as opposed to like, well, okay, I can learn to play in different. You know, I can push my guitar playing and try to get better as a guitar player. Um, yeah, I mean, at, at the same time, I feel like if if you don't need to do that, then there's literally no pressure for you to do that. You know. Um, no, so, no, of course. As I say, but yeah. yeah. But I think, you know, a lot of people, like, just because you don't need to do something doesn't necessarily mean that, like, you don't... No, that, that, that's, that's the whole thing, though, isn't it? Like, that, 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 that's exactly yeah. it. Like, as an underrated guitar player, like, as someone like Joni Mitchell, like, she has an amazing voice. Her lyrics are absolutely fantastic. She doesn't need to be a good guitar player because that's not the selling point. And yet, she is 
it's almost like going above and beyond what you're expected to be able to do yeah. if that makes yeah. sense but, yeah. you know? but at the same time they're, they're also doing very different things I think the type of song that Taylor Swift is writing is completely different from Joni Mitchell and oh yeah no of course um, like yeah, absolutely and, and, and I think hmm. like flashy guitar playing not, not that Joni Mitchell's guitar playing is flashy um, it, mm. it, you know, in terms of like, there's, there's no sort of fast riffs and runs and things like that. But I think it, like, it doesn't have a place in Taylor Swift's music. Mm. If that makes sense, you know, like, she, like, she doesn't need to write yeah. flashy guitar songs because that's not what she, you know, that, that's not mm. going, that doesn't fit in with the image that she's obviously and the music she's writing mm. at the moment. Whereas yeah. obviously I the mean, folks yeah, in the yes. 1960s more so, I guess, you know. Mm, yeah yes and no i feel like that's another rabbit hole that we need to pull ourselves out of now <laughs> but yeah. uh, uh okay yeah. so what other um what other guitar players do you think are underrated aside from taylor swift mm. or any others that you came across that were i've got good? quite a f- <clears throat> i've got quite a few i think i think Joni's. i feel like there's a lot of um like like I, I don't know if it's just a thing about open tuning, but I think I feel like people that play in open tunings suddenly they feel like a bit of like a better guitarist. <laughs> um, like yeah, I see um, what you mean. Like I don't know if we're just relegating those G chord players to, to yeah. But I, there's there's a lot of guitar parts that I've been noodling around with this week. Um, they've got all sorts of different tunings, so I'm, I'm gonna try and talk while I do it. <laughs> but um, um, what 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 am I in? So this one, this guitar is in open D. So um, like Hosier, for example. Do you know Hosier? Um, I know Hosier. He wrote like Take Me to Church. And he's actually like a really good guitarist if you actually dig into his music. Yeah. Um, like there's a song called Wasteland Baby that's in open tuning, which is like, um, it's got that sort of stride thing. Even that, that, like that, that's like. I mean, we can play it because it's like we can do it, but it, yeah, it's, it's not. It's not a typical like easy to play thing. And the fact no, that no. we can sing and write those songs at the same time, like, there's like there's like it's, a, it's there's really... like a guitar part. Yeah, yeah, and he's 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 got some interesting like surprisingly interesting rhythms in his music. There's a song called um, uh, almost sweet music or something like that, where it's kind of like the the rhythm is like. Uh. And then, and th- but this is actually like a four four riff, and like, yeah, I, I just thought that was um, like it just wasn't it wasn't what I expected from the guy who wrote "Take Me to Church." You know? Yeah. Um, I, and Timmy Church is like incredible song as well. But th- there's just a lot of like interesting things happening in in his songs that I thought that was worth highlighting. I guess <laughs> in that. No, respect. definitely. Yeah. Mm. I think speaking of interesting rhythms, like another one that I think mm. we both like quite a lot is Theo Katzman, mm. um, who makes like he he doesn't play acoustic guitar as often as he used to, but sort of like off the Romance mm. Without Finance album, like Brooklyn, the whole like. Mm. Yeah, it's just like yeah, absolutely I, fantastic, and and again, it's not like it's not complicated, and that like it's just different chord shapes sort of moving around. Yeah. It's the emphasis of the beats and the way they're mm. moving around. It's like it makes it into a, yeah. a guitar part. It's not it's not beginner stuff, you know. But even no. just like I, I feel like with accompanying music, there is also a lot of room for underrated guitarist chops to come out. Um, so there's a guy I've yeah. been listening to, um, like a soul singer, Alan Stone. Um, Oh and yeah. There's like a there's like a Spotify session he does and a couple of acoustic things, and um, he I mean I guess they're just acoustic versions of electric songs. Um, so he, he's mainly like an electric player, but he's not like an electric player. He's like a, you know, yeah more of a soul because he plays soul music. But he's a but there's e- electric. Player. But I feel like that there's even something to be said of even just going. That's his cover of "What's Going On" by Marvin Gaye, you know, and yeah, and um, yeah. Th- th- there's like I feel like that, like us as guitar players, we take that st- 
kind of stuff for granted, you know? That's like, very when I've been true, trying, actually. Like, like, even just barring chords, like, is a is some people's life dream to be able to do that because they can't yeah. play a freaking F, F major chord. chord because yeah. it's just too hard. Um, yeah. Like, we, we take some of that stuff for granted. So, so no, very he, for him to go... This song, Unaware. Like that type of like expression that comes with the soul of the songs like yeah it, it kind of goes under the radar for me like it's like it, it's, it's part of like it, it's not the main selling point of the song but it mm. it lifts the song it, it 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 almost portrays all the rhythms that it needs to do in order to make it feel that certain way it kind of like it, it almost it like it hides in it hides in plain sight doesn't it like it's something that yeah. like looking at it at least as a guitar player like it's something that you look at and mm. go oh yeah like technically i can play that like it's it's within yeah. my ability but at the same time because it's mm. it's yeah it's i think mm. it, it speaks to almost the like the whole songwriting side of it as well that like it's it's not going mm. okay well like i need to have a flashy guitar part because i have a guitar here mm. kind of like sometimes you do just literally just need like a and that's exactly yeah. what you need and it's perfect you know exactly. i think another so, one for mm. i was going to say like in terms of like chord stuff like um another i think a very underrated acoustic guitar player is jack johnson um mm. in that uh he literally just plays bar chords um mm. you know with a few melodies in there but the smoothness and the like the hand strength the guy has to do it for that long mm. is frightening mm. like um like banana pancakes the whole like But like it's a full like bar G chord, you know, mm. like the and then like he goes through the song going like But it's like the changes are so smooth between the chords to the point where you almost take for granted like exactly how like and the song is like four and a half minutes long and to have the hand string mm. to literally go like to play like full bar chords for like four and a half minutes, like it will kill your hands. Or like better together is another one. The whole like um, obviously minus the intro, and the whole thing is just like and if you try playing like like ten times through, like your hands get so tired. Um, but the guy has like monstrous, you know, just just moving between chords smoothly is something that I think is really underrated as well. And that like, when you mm. see someone do it, you don't realize how difficult it is until you try it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, there's one band that recently that I, I've just tuned my guitar to like a completely different tuning for what I wanted to demonstrate off your point. Smooth, but um, done. but uh, um, there, there's a band called Grizzly Bear recently. And I, I knew, I know they're like an amazing, like like musicians in the band, mm. but um, um, their guitarist, Daniel Rossin, who also writes part of the music, um, but some of the parts that I found recently, they're just so interesting from an acoustic guitar perspective. And you mm. listen to it, and and it, it is like complicated indie. Like you think of it as like, okay, it, it's like more interesting. It's not conventional like acoustic indie music. Indie. Yeah, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, it is. But but the guitar parts are just so interesting. I think. Excuse me. It's alright. You what? You're one of the fastest. Um, like. I've never seen someone tune a guitar as quickly as you have. And it just baffles me every time I watch you do it. Despite it being like my main instrument, the fact that you can like literally, yeah, yeah, and then it's done. It's, it's um, very yeah. It, it, I mean, uh, yeah, it comes from violin. You know, like with violin, you just yeah, that's what it is. Tune. Yeah, you just have to hear what a perfect fifth and fourth is. But yeah, yeah but this is this is part on the song called Southern Point that I've been checking out this week, and it's like, it's just really cool. So it's it's this weird, it's like a six sort of voicing, and then it's nice. pre-chord chorus and then it's like a 
crazy bridge. Yeah, and there's just like, like, it, uh, I just, I was just met. Like, it's one of my favorite songs anyway. Just from like, just from feeling the song without, without having to think about the guitar parts and how they're playing it. And yeah. Just to, and then when I started learning it, I was like, oh wow, this is like just really interesting and yeah and unconventional and, and it sounds yeah, a lot I, like I think, um yeah it sounds really like crosby stills and nashy to me that mm, yeah. like i don't know whether it's just this sort of like that having a similar chord and sort of moving it around like that it just like to me it sounds yeah, very, yeah. It's an amazing sound yeah it's um yeah well yeah once i figured it out uh, with a bit of tab help but you know yeah yeah <laughs> of course <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah, I, I thought that was that was my underrated guitarist of the week. I was like, damn, I gotta learn more of his stuff. And that's, I think that's that's, that, that's like that's like the best thing, you know, like going down that rabbit hole and of of playing guitar in general. That's that's what got us into it in the first place, right? Like yeah, going down no, these rabbit holes of of interesting guitar parts. Not not just the sweet child of minds of the world, but all the other interesting things that are yeah under the radar things, you know. The end of the radar stuff, exactly. I think another one um, uh, just uh, is sorry. Another one that I was to do, that just to come off that point was um, uh, I think Dave Matthews again has like I know I know he's he's part of the Dave Matthews band. He sort of built. He only plays acoustic guitar, but like some of his stuff is like again. It's it's just it's it's very it's not like it's easy to play and like it's easy to see what he's doing, but like the the stamina you need to do something like like crash into me for example like the whole mm. like like the whole like yeah like really big stretches um but like that song yeah. again it's like five and a half minutes long and literally like to hold that for like like i like i get sort of like four minutes in like my hand is like it it really starts hurting, um, you yeah. know, just to hold it down. Um, mm. And obviously, he has the whole like his his rhythm playing and sense of like rhythm is absolutely amazing as well. Like in something like um, mm. like Rapunzel, which is like the weird like the mm. thing in ten eight. Like so, like, yeah, oh, good song. <laughs> like it's just so cleverly done um yeah, and it, it's i feel like yeah and it is sort of it can go over the head of someone that's like a non-guitarist like you go to a dave matthews concert as a guitarist you're like sure technically great you know um, yeah but exactly. yeah i think it, it i think when it goes under the radar sometimes is when when it, it almost like it's just part of the music it's just part of what the even the non-guitarist feels um, yeah exactly but it's still technically hard to accomplish like that that person doesn't care if the guitar part's like hard to do or not you know um, no exactly it's, it's, it's just, just it's, it's just part it, of the music but yeah, yeah. it serves yeah. it serves the song perfectly um and yeah. just happens to be a really really difficult guitar part yeah. i think that's kind of that they're, they're 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 my favorite types of i mean like speaking of like as a guitar player as guitar parts go like yeah. the ones where it's not flashy for the sake of being flashy like it's not like i have the ability to play mm at 100 miles an hour I can you know I have the hamstring to do it like it's that like, the song needs this and so mm. I'll play it and sort of like they're the, they're some of the favorite parts to learn where it's kind of like yeah. like it's it, you know you sort of you play through it and you just sort of like it's it's just that's perfect it's exactly what the song yeah. needs at that per- certain point it's the most it's so exciting to just sort of to have that um you know like, like, like just to play through it and hear it back and be like that that's just that's perfectly written like it's exactly the way you know, like you couldn't write it better if you tried. Like you couldn't find a better version, a better mm. version, a better way of picking, strumming, whatever. It's just like exactly that way. It's just that's you know, it's just, it's just like yes, yeah, amazing, yeah, uh, yeah. I feel that way about sort of Joni Mitchell, and I think by association, and I don't know if you listen to a lot of Laura Marling, but she's a little an, bit, in, yeah. She's she's actually like she's. I feel like her guitar parts really they come through really well in terms of they're very subtle. But this, like, she, like, I feel like she must have been trained. I, I haven't done my research into this, but she must have been trained in some sort of like classical guitar because just the way she plays guitar has like a like this is like a, I think dad fad, and it's like dad it's like fad. a minor, um, 
and there's like even she's just playing like tense like uh, I think the song called What She Wrote but then she had but then she was like she's also doing another like a techniques sorry It's like she, like it doesn't really that's look really like classic, doing much. isn't it? But yeah, like, but that's part of the song. It's like, yeah. And it's like a really sad song, and um, yeah. But yeah, I, I think there's a lot. Of, like for me personally, that's like also another rabbit hole I want to go down. Is that sort of those type of parts, you know, like all the Joni Mitchell guitar parts? I really want to learn. Like not. Not just the, uh, you know. Yeah, not just the sort of stuff in standard. Not just, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that like that is an absolutely amazing guitar part. Mm. Like, yeah. Um, mm. I think that that it, that speaks to another interesting point that I've um, that we've talked about before about sort of like open tunings and the way they kind of like. There's that, like to me at least, there's like a time and a place for open tunings. I think because like like they they they're great in that they give your guitar a really unique sound. Um, mm. You know, and obviously you can't like you know with, with with you know with very difficult fingerings you can you can sort of achieve it. But like it allows you to play guitar in a sort of slightly different way. But at the same time, I think like I think it has to, it has to serve the song to me to listening to it. And there are a lot of covers of um, sort of. Like careless whispers, one that I've seen, sort of like done in like the acoustic finger style, where like everything's detuned and there's sort of like there's so much, um, sort of, it like the, the performance itself is in the coordination and sort of like it's 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 more of a coordination exercise and a feat of coordination than it is actually having a song coming out, if that makes any sense. It's sort of like I think open tunings are they are fantastic and like I've I've, I've I, I mean like so many of my teenage years were spent playing like Andy McKee and John Gon. Um, and Newton Fulton like who all play in open tunings but like my issue was always that like if you if you play live you have to have like three guitars ready um, you know for all of the different songs and the different tunes you're going into um, mm. and so like I think it, it depends on I mean it depends on the sort of performance you're giving I suppose like I think I think it's a, it's a perfect style of music for things like YouTube where you can watch it you know and the performance can be captured in a you know, almost in a vacuum I guess Whereas, like, I think, like, in a live uh, situation, a lot of songs that they become a lot harder to perform and a lot harder to carry off. You know, when mm. you when you've moved not not moved the goalpost, but where you've like you've detuned it to a point where it's so specific that it only plays that one song. Um, you know, and there are so many tiny little intricacies that you have to get right in order to actually make it sound like you know. And if you've got a crowded room with people talking and you're trying to actually perform, it becomes a lot more difficult to then to to do to do the song justice in the way that you've arranged it. Yeah, but at the same time, I feel like, yeah, I, I, there there is that criticism, but I also feel that it it sort of you you just have to be using it for the right reasons. Um, yeah, you have that's to. Exactly yeah, it. um, you you got to use be using it for a way that like it will make you transition between these chords to convey a different emotion. Mm. You know, um, um like you you can stretch and be really uncomfortable playing in standard tuning or there there's just a whole different set of like just even just tuning your guitar down to c sharp standard it already creates a different spectrum of emotions to do with that and then you add other tunings to it like just 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 the way intervals work they yeah they, they you just you just go into like it just conveys something different from when you're doing it something else so um, as long as you're not doing it for flashy reasons, mm. I feel like there is there is that place for it, and yeah, it's and it, 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 like... it will never trump standard tuning. You know, it's called standard tuning for a reason. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is the standard. Mm. Um, mm. I, by all means, though, I think that there, there is there's a time and a place for being like like that's that's it's half of the reason you learn guitar is to learn like cool mm. flashy stuff. Like you know, it's it's a it's it's a very cool <clears throat> instrument to learn to play. I think you know that's it's, again it's kind of the point that like that's why. Mm. I think it has that popularity as well mm. that like you have these rock stars from the 1980s these sort of these sex symbols in a way um, you know and so if you're someone who you know like if you're 
it, you know, I'm just trying to think of like like think of an age and a timestamp. But you know, say say that you you grew up watching you know someone like Slash on stage, um, you know, or someone like like um, like Jimmy Page um, play. You know, it's 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 something to really aspire to, sort of, and it's the flashy stuff that's really expe- really impressive. If you see like Eddie Van Halen playing Eruption, it's just like it's a mu- it's an amazing thing to see. Um, mm. And so I think there is a time and a place for flashiness, definitely. Um, mm. But again, it's kind of like it's 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 the whole it's the intention, the setting, and the performance and everything that sort of makes it that makes it. Mm. You know. Yeah, it's like like I've got this really weird tuning that I learned from a Journey song. <laughs> it's literally only for this Journey song. It's Open G. Is it um, the circle game? The circle game. Yeah. Is it the circle game? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and there's just the thing about that tuning. It's like you, you you just it just has to be that you know, like you gotta. Yeah, have to that's true. That and then be able to, and then there's like all this other weird stuff in there. Yeah. Yeah, those chords. But um, As, yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, we're, we're totally overrunning just because it's. You can sort of get away with it, like in standards, mm. you know, like a bit less likely. Mm. Yeah. Oh, mm. is it? Mm. Yeah, but no, I see. Yeah. Like, yeah, that that is. Mm. Yeah, to be true to the original song, like like you do need to have the the open tunings. Um, yeah, and, and she's then, like, I she's, guess there's she's, the ethos of experimentation as well. You know, it's like. You, you gotta try like i i feel like there there is a place f- that th- that is a time and place for that it's like oh, no, you want to experiment you want to access things that you might normally not access in your box you know mm. yeah and i think that's definitely like like in terms of songwriting mm. well just music in general mm. i think it is it's so important mm. to be able to um you know or to have the ability to push yourself out of your comfort zone mm. and i guess like or not out of your comfort zone but to, you know but to try new things to sort of expect like to noodle around with things which i think is a very mm. is a very guitar based thing to do sort of noodling and like playing around that's where most of my songs come from is from noodling mm. and you know finding new things and weird things that you haven't done before and weird tunings and stuff um mm. and so like yeah i think I, I think alternate tunings they they it's definitely worth it for you know for finding a new sound sort of thing but again it's just it's just time mm. and place sort of thing isn't it but, but again but it's the same with everything you know like if you can shred mm. a diminished scale at 420 beats per minute great and there is a time and a place for that but like it's not mm. in a folk song for example um yeah though it would be interesting to <laughs> just to put it in there just to see um <laughs> but you know that's um you know it's the whole thing of like you know musical um it's like tasteful playing isn't it and sort of and um doing what a song requires yeah i'm i'm yeah i'm just very like i, I just want to be able to find more of those things so i feel like yeah. if, if any listener is still listening has, has got past Leo's initial playing of Wonderwall and has got to, to us yeah. discussing open <laughs> tunings. It got a bit nerdy at the end, I think. No. Um, I mean, it's, 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 it's yeah. a very, like, open tuning mm. is very, it's a very nerdy, um, Yeah, it's quite a nerdy sort of, like, rabbit hole yeah. of guitar to go down yeah. as far as guitar yeah, we, goes. Yeah, we've definitely, like, just kind of thrown paint at the wall this episode, but I feel... Um, yeah, but I mean, if, if anyone listening has any sort of guitarists that they feel are underrated... Like I'd love to hear from you. Like just, just, just text me. Just send us a message on Instagram or Twitter. Just be like, "Hey, check out this guitarist," um, or or check out the guy who plays or the girl who plays guitar in this band or something, <laughs> or check out those guitar parts in that song that are like buried in the mix, um, because because that's the stuff I feel. I mean, at least for me, selfishly, I, I just want to find out, you know. Yeah, that's 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 yeah. that's that's the stuff that gets me going. Mm. Like, if you've got good guitar parts in a song, like send that over mm. it'd be really really cool to hear about it um yeah. i guess or, or 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 let me convince leo that it's a good part <laughs> <laughs> i so. like taylor swift i'm sorry just <laughs> um i guess one more thing i was going to ask uh was in terms of the whole <clears throat> guitar and pop music uh and the relevance of guitar like i guess it's kind of uh, we, we both kind of sort of hinted at it that it's sort of it's gone it's 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 taken more of a backseat, I guess, as music sort of mm. leaned towards um, having a heavier sort of synthesized sound as it has in the last kind of twenty years, I suppose. Um, at least since since I've been listening to popular music, um, do you think that acoustic guitar will always be relevant? 
like do you think it will always have a like what 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 do you see like do you think guitar will be relevant like as relevant into like 10 years time in 2030 i think yes i think there's a bit of a myth that <clears throat> synthesizers are going to take away from like, like take over the pop, world take over the world this is kind of like an immigrants <laughs> issue you know like like um in terms of music um i mean don't yes don't take that yeah. a very surface level thing but yeah yeah like, don't, don't oh, they're gonna come all. in it's like they're gonna they're gonna like like come in and take over and there's gonna be no more acoustic guitarists you know yeah and i feel like there, there are some i feel like there is a sort of a narrative to that that can um but at the same time it is an instrument, you know. It's like the violin will never go away, and no, that's um, very true. That's very true. And because strings do a certain thing, like strings are going to be part of cinema. Like acoustic mm. guitars, it's there. Like they're part of cinema, you know. Like at the end of Endgame, how does it go? It's like, um, oh, what's the theme? Uh, oh, it's the whole like. Uh, uh, what is it? No, it's like, no, 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 no. That, that's that's the theme. That's the arrangement of the theme. But there's that there's that thing. <laughs> but there, there's like Iron Man's theme, and even the theme through our end game is an acoustic guitar. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Uh, uh. Oh yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's a good go. Yeah. Go listen to that theme on the soundtrack. But I mean, that's part of the biggest films of all time. So it's not going away anytime soon. No, so that's true. There's um, there, I guess there's a certain sort of um, like it will always evoke a certain time. It would always yeah. evoke evoke like Wonder Wall will always be on an acoustic guitar, yes. and that and and all these there will be songs that last forever, that are played on an acoustic guitar and that's the way you access that emotion um, yeah so it won't go away Wh whether it's part of mainstream new music is another thing mm. um but it's, uh, it's it's not going away anytime soon in our lives <laughs> um, no i think i think you're that's right. my opinion yeah i, th I think yeah th there's definitely uh, it, w it i think it, it will always be there i think maybe because obviously you don't see it in popular music in the same way as you do you don't have like sort of guitar heroes in the same way as you did before whereas like where, where pop songs had a lead singer and the band had a lead guitarist as well and the lead guitarist was almost mm. as important not you know like had the same mm. level of fame as the singer like if you think about like like guns and roses is always a really good example of like of slash like he is as famous as axel rose and as famous as the band like as a separate entity you know, mm. like you could argue the same with like Brian May and Queen, Jimmy Page and Led Zeppelin, like the guitar player itself is kind of like an entity within the band. Um, mm. And I guess that is less so now. But then again, at the same time, I think with the proliferation of, you know, social media and YouTube and covers, like so many covers are done on acoustic guitar that like you, you're, you're still seeing so many people playing acoustic guitar in so many situations, like um that yeah i agree like i don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon yeah and it's it's in all sorts of like not even just the front of music but all the all the sort of the middle class of music you know like the all the all the all the, <laughs> all the indie rocks or the sorry I'm, I'm bringing a lot of random like like political analogies yeah into... you're you feeling all right today <laughs> <laughs> but yeah but I, i'm just saying like the the less popular artists like not the not the people that are earning billions and billions and are in the charts um, those those music that is touching people that have their own fan bases, they have guitars in them and they have really good guitars there. And it, it's sort of like an art that's always going to be there, you know. The same way, like, string quartets would not go away. Um, yeah. Guitar-led bands would also not go away. They just might not be the highest-selling music, you know. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And obviously yeah. that's... Like, new, new, new things will come in and we'll, you know not take the pie but they're, they're just going to be what people make music with going forward you know yeah um, no exactly yeah but, no, i think it's definitely but, yeah it's 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 safe it's safe mm, yeah it's just, it's just not, not on the like charts. it's not like the sack butt but from the medieval yeah. times it's like <laughs> gonna mm. move into obscurity like i think i think yeah. it's, it's here to stay yeah and, and and you know like for some of the biggest earners in the world like taylor swift and ed sheeran like we discussed yeah they play acoustic guitar. They're guitar players so 
and and it's 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 a part of their thing. They write, they literally write their songs on on a guitar and piano. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, it's, it's it's not going away. But uh, maybe you maybe maybe the maybe the idea that someone who is like Paul Simon, but then yeah, maybe someone can argue Ed Sheeran is like Paul Simon. You know, just very different. <laughs> um, <laughs> Like Paul Simon didn't have a loop pedal. That's like the most diplomatic. Like, so. yeah, he's very similar, but for, like he's, he's just like Paul Simon, but very different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but in terms no, of occupying I see, that space, I see what you mean. Yeah. I, I, I think as like a, mm. yeah, I think I think singer songwriters will always be there. But I think that mm. I get that's that's another thing. I know I know we're we're we're, uh, we're moving on in time now. But it's like, the longest episode of Sonic Bites ever. It's, it's a but, Sonic buffet. It's a Sonic buffet. It's, like it's a Sonic uh, gigabyte. Uh, um, gig, yeah. Ah, that's that's better. Yeah. Um, but like, I think the acoustic <laughs> guitar, like as a songwriting tool, is something mm. that is very unique as well. And mm. be- and again, yeah. because it's, I think now because you have the you know the proliferation of social media and you can see so many people playing guitar and so many people writing songs and music is so easy to record now. In that, like, I mean, Logic mm. Pro costs what like two hundred pounds. Um, you know, you can buy. Mm. Uh, an interface and a microphone you can have everything you need for a home studio for a, a lot less money than you could say 20 years ago um and a guitar is part of that as well and so i think as a songwriting tool mm. it's something that's really useful as well because again you can do so many different things on it you can play rhythm you can play melody you can <clears throat> work out guitar parts you can just strum chords like there's so much to do on an acoustic guitar that can help you write a song um mm. and so i think again that's something else that you know, as 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 long as singer songwriters exist, um, I think guitars will exist as well. Yeah. You know. So I learned a guitar. That's the more of the story. Get an acoustic yeah. guitar from Argos or the Hong Kong equivalent, uh, and <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Uh, what is the Hong Kong equivalent of Argos? Is there one? Um, Argos. As in, like um, a place where you go to, like, because did you? You, like, like Argos where you like where you can order stuff and you pick it up in store and you sort of like uh, maybe Argos is just a weirdly British thing like and they don't have that anywhere else I think just the yeah there's not something obvious they, it, they, they, it, it's, it's even if there are those type of things that you can go and pick up stuff it's not centralised as a massive company like Argos it's yeah <laughs> um, it's going to be in your local shops or whatever um, like you can buy everything you need at Argos in Hong Kong, it's just not all in one place at Argos. So. Yeah. Um. <laughs> um. Well, wherever you are in the world, uh, I would thoroughly recommend getting an acoustic guitar if you don't have yeah. one already. And and if you're in, if you're listening in Hong Kong, go to Tom Lee. That's yeah. our. There you go. That's the all... equivalent of uh, whatever it is. Actually, no, you you don't have that in Hong in the UK. Or Vietnam, we have a listeners in Vietnam as well. If you're in Vietnam, go to the Vietnam equivalent <laughs> of Argos. Ireland, the US, the US. Where else have we got? We've got Italy, Greece, France. Mm. But mm. less than, like one percent of all of our listeners all these countries. Yeah. If 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 yeah. obviously if you'd like to and you can afford it, uh, it's mm. a wonderful, uh, mm. enriching experience learning to play the acoustic guitar, whatever capacity you play it in, be it strumming chords, be it finger picking, be it songwriting, be it playing in a band. Um it's it's which is the reason I'm here <laughs> making a podcast because it's allowed me to become a musician um, so yeah I, I, I cannot recommend it enough do it do it thank you so much for tuning in to Sonic Bites if you liked what you heard drop us a like or follow us on Spotify Anchor FM or wherever you get your podcasts or drop us a comment on YouTube at Leo Kelly G Music Instagram at Sonic Bites or Twitter at Sonic Bites Pod more episodes coming very soon stay tuned